Hi and welcome to Unit 2, Topic 1, Complex Numbers, and this is Video 2, where we're going to be looking at division of complex numbers. So first I need to define something called the complex conjugate. A conjugate is a little bit like the conjugate you've been using, or you have used, perhaps you've used this word in your work on thirds. Perhaps you haven't. Um, but the complex conjugate is really simple. We've got Z, which is our complex number, a plus bi for some real numbers a and b z bar the little bar above is called the conjugate of z and we just change the imaginary numbers to be negative and you'll see why this is important now it's important because we end up with a plus bi times by a minus bi which you might recognize is the difference of two squares which gives us a squared plus and by plus i mean minus b squared i squared and actually i squared is negative one so we get a squared plus b squared so it's kind of like the difference of two squares but it becomes a sum of two squares because of the imaginary part the important thing here though is that a and b are real numbers so a squared plus b squared are real numbers we've taken two complex numbers and it creates a real number and in fact z bar the conjugate has come from z so if you just conjugate z and then multiply them together, you'll always get a real number, which will be important here for our division. So imagine you're in a situation like example four, where you're being asked to calculate a division, three plus i divided by two minus i. Now we typically don't technically divide complex numbers. Instead, we simplify a fraction by multiplying by the conjugate. And the conjugate of two minus i is two plus i. We just flip that around. 2 minus i becomes 2 plus i, and now we just multiply these fractions and simplify. I get 3 plus i, the numerator will take a bit longer, 2 plus i. In the denominator though, I get difference of two squares, and I've done this very deliberately. I've made the choice to do 2 plus i, because it will give me 2 squared minus i squared. Now on top, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 times i plus 3 times i, plus i squared. And the bottom, 2 squared is 4, minus negative 1. Don't rush the bottom, because it's always going to take a bit longer on top. 6 plus i squared becomes 6 plus negative 1, which becomes 5. And then plus five, uh, 2i plus 3i is plus 5i. And on the bottom, 4 plus 1 is 5. Simplified gives me 1 plus i. So there's a simplification of that division, believe it or not. And then we have a question that's solving. And this is reasonably common again. So this is just one step off the question above. But this becomes z equals 3 plus 3i over 7 minus 2i. Now just as a note, and we might not be quite there with your thinking yet. But if I change z to be equal to a plus bi, I could actually expand that and then do something called equating the real and imaginary parts to so solve for a and b. I think it'll actually take longer in most cases, but it's another worthwhile approach to consider because it might help you in certain problems. Anyway, here we are. The conjugate of 7 minus 2i is 7 plus 2i over 7 plus 2i. We multiply by the number divided by itself because that's kind of like multiplying by 1. So it's okay, we haven't changed the equation. So I get 3 plus 3i times by 7, that's a z, 7 plus 2i all over. Now this we, we chose 7 plus 2i because it's a conjugate. So we get 7 squared minus 2i squared. Now, 3 plus 3i times 7 plus 2i becomes 21 plus 21i, and then plus 6i plus 6i squared. And the bottom I get 49, and then minus 4i squared, which is 49 plus 4, so that's 53. And that gives me 21 and then plus 6i squared is minus 6, so 15, plus 27i over 53, which is 
the correct answer, but we might consider simplifying it down to 15 over 53, that's a 3, 53 plus 27 over 53i. That's now in the form a plus bi. So it's a little bit of a better form to put it in, and sometimes a question will ask you to put it in that form, so just be wary of that. Now in example 5, and we have an example 5 and an example 6, so we'll just go through this one reasonably quickly. In example 5, we need to prove a couple of things. Now they're not too tricky to prove, but they do take a bit of time. So it's worth having a think about them, um, but I don't want to waste too much time on them. But we'll do A first. Prove that the conjugate of Z1 plus Z2 is equal to the conjugate of Z1 plus the conjugate of Z2. The best way to do this is to define Z1 as A plus BI and Z2 as C plus DI. You can define them as whatever you want. But then to answer A, I'm going to say that the left hand side, remember this is a proof, is equal to the conjugate of, and so I'm going to need a nice long conjugate bar here, because I'm going to do A plus BI plus C plus DI. I'll put them in brackets. That's equal to A plus C plus B plus D I. Conjugate of that. When you conjugate something, you just make the imaginary component negative. So it's A plus C minus B plus D I. And of course, the right-hand side is equal to the conjugate of the two separately added together. A minus B I plus C minus D I. And that's equal to A plus C minus B plus D I. And so you can see where that's come from. And this is equal to the left-hand side. So there's our proof. Now I could do the same thing with the second one. Um, but I'm going to leave you to have a play with that one. And we'll cover it in class as well, if need be. So that's example 5. And we'll finish off this video with example 6. If z is equal to 5 plus 12i, then determine z squared, z to the negative 1, and z to the power of a half. Now z to the power of a half is an interesting one, and that's the one I really want to get to, because taking a square root is uh, the next step on what we're doing. So let's start with a. z squared is equal to 5 plus 12i squared, which is equal to 5 plus 12i times 5 plus 12i. So this is an easy one because 5 plus 12i squared is just 25, 5 times 5, plus 60i. This is a perfect square. We could use that technique as well. Plus 60i plus 144i squared. That's 25 minus 144 is equal to negative 119. I hope my math is right there plus 120i. So there's A. Now B is z to the power of negative 1. So B is z to the power of negative 1, which is equal to 1 over z. And that, of course, is equal to 1 over 5 plus 12i. So we're going to multiply this by the conjugate. 5 minus 12i over 5 minus 12i. That's equal to 5 minus 12i on top over, now remember we did this as a perfect square, 25 minus 144i squared, and that becomes 25 plus 144, so it's 5 minus 12i over 169, It happens to be 13 squared, which is interesting, and I might just write this down as 5 over 169 minus 12 over 169i. Okay, and then we're on to C. So C is, calculate Z to the power of a half, which is equal to the square root of Z, and that's equal to the square root of 5 plus 12i. Now, the square roots are a bit harder. And it depends on this concept that we know that the square root is going to be a complex number, so it's going to be some number in the form a plus bi. 
and that must equal the square root of 5 plus 12i. So then what we do is we get the a plus bi and we square that and that's equal to 5 plus 12i. And by squaring that, we've now got a situation where we can do something mathematically because we didn't know how to do the square root. So when I square this a plus bi, I get a squared. I'm going to rush a little bit here. 2abi and then plus b squared i squared is equal to 5 plus 12i. And that gives me a squared minus b squared because b squared i squared is b squared times negative 1, plus 2abi. Now, I'm going to just do this in two different colours. Do orange first of all, orange around the real component there, and let's add our real component here, and we've got orange around that. And then purple around the imaginary coefficient, so let's add our imaginary coefficient here, and we'll put purple around that. So you can see what we're going to do now is we're going to equate the real and imaginary parts. This is one single equation, but the real parts must be equal for this to work. So it must mean that 1 a squared minus b squared must equal 5, and 2, 2ab two must equal 12. Now the nice thing about this is what it means is that over in 2 we can say that a must equal 6 over b. So I've just done 12 divided by 2b which is 6 over b. And bringing that back across to 1 I get 6 over b squared minus b squared equals 5 which gives me 36 over b squared minus b squared equals 5, which gives me 36 minus b to the power of 4 equals 5b squared. And I encourage you to have a think about what I've just done there. But in short, I've multiplied everything by b squared. Um, now this is kind of a quadratic. Um, I'm going to move everything across. So I get 0 is equal to b to the power of 4 plus 5b squared minus 36. Um, so this is, it is a quadratic. It's a bit tricky to see, but just to give you a bit of an eyes up on it, it's kind of like x squared minus 5x, and by minus I mean plus, minus 36, where x is equal to b squared. And maybe pause now and take a second to think about that. But just to factorize x squared plus 5x minus 36, I get x plus 9 x minus 4. So I'm going to have b squared plus 9 b squared minus 4 and that leads to either b squared plus 9 equals 0 which means b squared equals negative 9 which means that b is equal to technically um, it's equal to plus or minus 3i go through that process, I'll take the square root, I'll get the square root of negative 9. Um, but we don't really have to, I'll show you why, but we don't really have to deal with this too much, because remember, we've kind of defined b as a real number, I'll show you in a second. Or b squared is equal to 4, which means that b is equal to plus or minus 2. Now, don't forget that a was equal to 6 over b, so therefore a is equal to plus or minus 3. And we're saying right at the start we made the claim that the square root of z is going to equal some complex number, a plus bi. And remember that we've always made that claim where a and b exist in the reals. Now it doesn't matter too much because if we treat b as if it can be a complex number, we actually just get our a values and everything works out. But let's imagine we can't have that because b can't be a complex number. So therefore, either b is positive 2, which means that a is positive 3, and z to the power of a half is equal to 3 plus 2i, or it's equal to negative 3 minus 2i. Now, I've done that in a bit of a rush. It's a pretty hard problem, but that's kind of what you'll have to deal with sometimes, some of these hard problems. Uh, that's a pretty small component of this topic, though. 
make sure you got the rest of the arithmetic right first. So that's the end of video two. All the best.